I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons Martin Luther King Jr. once said that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at time of challenge and controversy. And for Gadebo Rhodes Vivo, the role to becoming a governorship candidate in Nigeria has been nothing short of controversial. To some, he is Chinedu of Biafra land, chief enforcer of IPOP values coming to steal the land of the Yorubas and auction it to the tyrant from the Far East. And to many, he is another rebel from the Labour Party syndicate that has rocked Nigeria and in effect Lagos into a revolution. But who is Badebo Rhodes Vivo really? What drives him and what are his true intentions? In this video, we will take you on the journey of discovery, uncovering the truth about the enigmatic political figure, from his humble beginnings to his meteoric rise as an architectural prodigy at MIT. To his daring move into Nigerian politics, we will explore the life of this controversial candidate and the mysteries that have shrouded him in controversy and intrigue. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Badibo's story begins in Lagos Island, where he was born on the 8th of March 1983. He soon moved to Ikeja, where he grew up. Born into a family of barrister Olawale and Mrs. Nkechi Rhodes Vivo, Badibo grew up in a loving family with strong values. But you see, Badibo's father wasn't the only lawyer in the family. In fact, that was far from the case. His uncle, Bade Vivo, is a prominent Nigerian jurist and former justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. His grandfather, Chief Akinwumi R.W. Rodvivo, was a Nigerian George who left a remarkable legacy in Midwest Nigeria, serving in various capacities in Nigeria's western region, including as a justice of the High Court. And that's just the surface of it. Going back many years into Badi's ancestry, you will find the story of Bankole Vivo, who fought in World War II against Hitler and lost his life bombing Berlin and Nürnberg 77 years ago. Badibo's family tree is definitely full of adventure and prominent freedom fighters, but the real truth behind his success and his rise to fame is even more fascinating. At a very young age, Badibo was enrolled in Chrisland Primary School. Since Chrisland also had a secondary school with a reputation for excellence at the time, Badibo's parents decided to allow him continue at Chrisland Secondary School. But after JSS3, Badibo's exceptional performances were going to be tested in Paris. A core active Berlin in Paris was just the beginning of a remarkable academic journey. After his studies there, he moved on to obtain his bachelor's degree in architecture from the esteemed University of Nottingham, a testament to his dedication to excellence. But Badibo didn't stop there. He continued his quest for knowledge, achieving a master's degree in the same field from the globally acclaimed Massachusetts Institute of Technology (MIT). His master's degree thesis at MIT was titled Traditional Revolution formalizing the informal. Badibo didn't only highlight his expertise in developing sustainable solutions for urban waste management, he also earned himself a distinction in the process. But all of Badibo's successes away from Nigeria didn't perturb his dedication to his country and his passion for public service. In 2008, he joined the National Youth Service Corps program known as NYSC, a voluntary one-year program for Nigerian graduates. And by 2009, he had completed the program and solidified his commitments to making a positive impact in his community. Shortly after, he continued his education and obtained a second master's degree in research and public policy from the University of Lagos, Unilag. Badibo's academic journey is certainly a testament to his unrelenting drive for success and test for knowledge that foils his passion for innovation. But this man isn't just a thinker. He is also a doer and has a career track record to prove it. Badibo Rhodes Vivo's career has been marked by a series of remarkable accomplishments, beginning with his work at Franklin Ellis Architect in the UK before pursuing his master's degree at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Upon his return to Nigeria, Badibo worked with several distinguished firms, including CISA, Cliff Consulting, now building partnership CCP, and Patrick Wai. However, it was his entrepreneurial spirit that eventually led him to find special 
Tectonics, an innovative design and architectural firm that has become one of the most sought after in Nigeria. Badebo's expertise in design and architecture has been instrumental in many high-profile projects in Lagos, including the redesign of the Lagos Island Waterfront, the revitalization of the National Art Theatre, and the development of a master plan for the Lagos International Airport. Clearly, Badebo wrote Vivo has used his education and experience to create practical solutions for the challenges facing his country. And so, it's probably not a surprise that this man has developed such a strong political ambition. With a heart full of passion and fire burning within, Rodvivo threw himself into the political arena. He was one of the young and brave ones who benefited from the not-too-young-to-run legislation and he was determined to make a difference. In 2017, Rodvivo contested for the Ikeja Local Government Area Chairmanship under the Kowa Party. Fueled by a desire to make a change in his community, he chose to run on the Kowa platform, citing the absence of Godfatherism in the party and faced off against the candidate of the incumbent APC. Despite putting up a brave fight, he lost the race. But Rosviva wasn't one to give up easily. In 2019, he threw his heart into the ring once again, this time to represent Lagos West in the Senate under the PDP. His campaign points were clear to revamp the infrastructure within the district and to dethrone the absentee senator who was more focused on a futile governorship bid in Ogun State than on the district that had already given him his mandate. With unwavering determination, Rodvivo campaigned tirelessly, connecting with people of Lagos West and winning their hearts. But when the final polls were announced, he had come second, losing to the incumbent senator and contestant under the elsewhile ruling party APC, Adiola Yayi. Olamile Konola, Rodvivo had garnered 39.40% of the vote, while Adiola received 41.38%, a difference of 80,301 votes. Determined not to go down without a fight, Rodvivo contested the result in court, citing electoral violence and disruptions as reasons why the result should not be valid. His case was strong, but the court deemed it that it was not enough to overturn the election of his opponents. Although Rosvivo did not emerge victorious, he remained courageous and resilient in his determination to serve his people. In 2022, things started to look up again. Baribo was selected as one of the nominees to contest for governorship under the People's Democratic Party PDP. This party had remained one of the two major opposing parties in Nigeria for a while now. But just before the primary elections were held, Baribo dramatically pulled out. He again crossed capital to another party, a less popular one known as the Labour Party, and in the same manner, won the ticket to represent the party at its gubernatorial candidate for the upcoming 2003 Lagos State gubernatorial election. He got 111 votes, defeating former All Progressive Congress APC chieftain Moshud Salvador, who got 102 votes. Now, imagine this. A man that has lost the race to become the chairman of a local government stood strong and persevered, fighting his way to the top and not losing his determination until he became the governorship candidate and all of this happened in just five years. But Ibo's story is certainly one of courage, resilience and a relentless spirit. But every success story has a twist and Baribos wouldn't be any different. So you now know most of the unlikely story of the young dreamer that is Badebo Rose Vivo. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. It all started when old twist of Lagos gubernatorial candidates Badebo Rose Vivo, seemingly defending separatist group IPOP were dug out. Immediately, an agenda to label him an IPOP apologist who has a dark twisted motive for wanting to become the governor of Lagos State to full swing. Now, the independent people of Biafra, IPOB, is a nationalist separatist organization founded in 2012 by Inamdi Kanu and Uche Mefo with the goal of restoring the Republic of Biafra, a country that seceded from Nigeria before being defeated by the Nigerian military in the Nigerian Civil War and then reintegrated into Nigeria. Since 2021, IPOB and other Biafran separatist groups have been locked in a low-level guerrilla conflict against the Nigerian government in southeastern Nigeria. Despite being deemed a terrorist organization by the Nigerian government in 2017, IPOB remains steadfast in its pursuit of a free Biafra. At the forefront of this struggle are Namdi Kanu, a 
A British national political activist and vocal advocate of the contemporary Biafran independence movement, Kano's unwavering commitment to the cause has earned him both admirers and detractors, but he remains a force to be reckoned with. However, IPOM's methods have not gone without controversy. As of May 2002, the United Kingdom began denying asylum to members of the group who engaged in human rights abuses. Despite this, the United Kingdom government has made it clear that IPOB has not been designated as a terrorist organization. The story of IPOB is still unfolding, but it is one of the group of people who are willing to fight for what they believe in, no matter the cost. So you can understand why this is such a big issue for Lagosians and Nigerians at large. As this controversy were brewing, another tweet was shut up from the bowels of Twitter to flame the fires. In this new tweet episode from 2001, Badibo in an exchange with another Twitter user used the word Afonja. Afonja is a term reportedly used to describe a betrayer. It comes from a story of Afonja, a Yoruba general of the early 19th century in Ilori, Kwara state, who alleged aligned with the Fulani to overthrow the Yoruba empire that ruled Ilori at the time. Later on, Afonja was assassinated and the Fulani and Nukwe people he aligned with took over the leadership of Ilori. What was once a Yoruba empire became an annex of the Sokoto Caliphate. This could have simply been seen as a banter from one Twitter user to the other. But unfortunately, another revelation turned things absolutely awry. This time around, it was a poster of what looked like Badibo campaigning for a senatorial seat for Lagos West in 2019 and his name read as Chinedu Badibo wrote Vivo. Immediately, the tribalism radar of many Nigerians reached DEFCON 1, an evil man to rule a state where the majority tribe is Yoruba. Untimely, we found out that Badibo wrote Vivo is by law a Yoruba man. He is only Igbo by extension maternally. But the flames have already been lit and now the stakes have never been higher for the young boy from Ikeja. However, many of his supporters have come out to say that these are just media propaganda inflicted on Gwadibot's campaign by the opposition party which is not at all in any way innocent. In fact, the whole country is rocked by the biggest controversy since its independence due to the just concluded presidential election won by the same party, All Progressive Congress APC. To be fair, Badiba Rose Vivo's life story is one of incredible determination, perseverance and passion for public service. From his early days in Queensland primary and secondary schools to his time studying in prestigious university in Europe and the United States, Badiba has always been driven by a desire to make a positive impact on the world around him. His proposal to build a network of recycling facilities and garbage collectors in Lagos, Abuja and Port Harcourt is nothing short of revolutionary. He saw the potential to turn waste into a significant source of income and employment and he didn't hesitate to act. His key derivatives for Lagos have centered around youth empowerment, blocking identifiable leakages and reducing the cost of governance, developing a multimodal transport system, cleaning up the environment, boosting agriculture and tackling the perennial Lagos traffic and insecurity. His desire is also to level up the standard of living of those that live in Lagos but in doing so, he also intends to be accountable and not run as an OPEC government. The Labour Party candidate is set to contest against APC's Babajide Sonwolu and PDP's Abdul Aziz Olajide Adeniro, aka Jando, in the upcoming election on March 11. May the best man win. If you enjoyed this video, you can check this one and many others. They are fun watches.